Hola. Hola. Not hola. Hola from Portugal. Portugal, yes. Hola and hola. Hola. S sounds similar but a different emphasis. Yeah. Coming to you from Portugal this week um, at a place called Pedreiras. We're staying on olive farm. Yeah. Hence olive trees olive in the trees. background. Another beautiful sunny day. Still no sign of rain, although there is a little bit of rain in the forecast later this week. We'll see, we might get some rain finally. No, you don't it's believe been it? forecast before, I don't mm. believe it. Well, we left you uh, at the beginning of the week, we were in Spain. So we were in a place called El Rocchio, which is um, what a bit of a cowboy town, isn't it? There are no roads. It's got um, dirt roads everywhere, and it's all about horses and the Virgin Mary isn't it? They do uh, 50 days after Easter Sunday they do a pilgrimage and hundreds of thousands of people descend on the town to steal the Virgin Mary from the church and parade her through the town apparently they go a couple of nights without sleep and it's just one big party so that was happening the week after we were there so thank goodness we yep. weren't there then. A different picture when that happens. Completely different picture. Um, from El Roque we crossed the border into Portugal and um, went down to Faro was our first stop wasn't it? Faro is very quite nice. quite cool actually. We yeah. uh, went for a wander through the old town and then down onto the waterfront where there was a bit of live music. Well, actually we sat down to have a drink first. Lovely spot and then a guy sets up his guitar and um, starts playing some pretty cool rock then music. Then a pizza, then it turned into another drink, which turned into another drink. Which then we had to cycle back up which the hill to the van to, yeah. and drive to out of, we didn't want to stay in um, in Faro because it was sort of just a supermarket car park. We wanted a little bit further out, so we went up the road to a place called Sal Bras de um, Porto, I think it's uh, the correct name. And we had a nice little air there um, mm -hmm. and stayed overnight and then went into the town the next morning and a nice little round town there. Um, tasted some of the local treats, which was nice, wasn't it, in a little cafe there. Those little pies are just absolutely gorgeous. I think we've had one every single day since. It's been a bit of a mission. It's so every nice. village we try out the local, actually we don't even know the name of it, do we? It's a bit slack. Um, but anyway, they're nice. They're like a custard tart. Um, so we've been following, um, there's a national road called the N2, it's like the old national road, it's been uh, sort of overtaken by toll roads um, today, but uh, it's a bit like Route 66, but the Portuguese style one, goes up through the centre of the town, uh, through the uh, country, and um, they've sort of made it into a bit of a tourist route, so you can get a passport and then you go to all the stops on the N2 and you get the stamp in your passport, so we've sort of been following that up. Um, from south to north uh, at the moment and sort of checking out some pretty cool little villages along the way. Um, next stop was a little place, very rural, Castro Verde. Um, had some um, windmills and a nice little old town um, and carried on up to a place. Oh, we went for a bit of a side trip actually, out more towards the coast on a river. Um, it's called El Casar do Sal, and that was actually my birthday. So we spent the day, um, the night there, and had, went out for dinner. A beautiful place right on the river. Um, beautiful lit up um, town at night. So some nice night shots there. The band came out to play for him oh, as especially well. Especially for my mm -hmm. um, birthday. It was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, from there, where did we go? We went to a little place called Viana do. Alentenia, yo, Alentenio. So, um, another small place on the N2, um, carried on up through to a place called Mont, uh, Montmore O Novo, which was, um, we stayed next to a bullring there, and that had a nice castle up on the top of the hill, and we went up and explored that. Mm. And now we find ourselves in Predreas, so, yeah, beautiful place, but it's a free air on a olive farm and we've just had a tour and a tasting of the olive um, factory they've been there for a hundred years and talked us through the whole process 
Um, so thoughts on Portugal so far, Claire? The people are so friendly, so friendly, and they're very enthusiastic about their country and the history of their country, and it's so easy to find out about the history of Portugal when you go to places. Everybody speaks English, so the language barrier is completely gone. Um, and One thing I will say though is once they get into a car and get on the road, they're dangerous. <laughs> they are the worst passing. drivers we've seen so oh far. God. It's a terrible passing. So many accidents they could have happened. They'll pass you anywhere. You know, we oh. go the speed limit slightly over sometimes and we feel like we're going backwards. It's uh, much worse here in Portugal than anywhere else so far. So Portuguese, you need to slow down. <laughs> so there are a lot of storks around storks, too. Yeah, We've noticed there's again. storks everywhere. Yeah. And they all have their nests on top of... Um, Lamp posts and on top of electricity posts and things, and they've all got babies in their nests. Yeah, so, so we, we go saw through the and we see little babies. Um, in storks nice. in Spain, and there was just in one village, but here it seems to be very widespread. It's everywhere. Um, lots and lots of storks. So yeah, it's pretty cool it's to see the storks again. See they have uh, the food is cheaper in restaurants here. The when you eat out at lunch, we had a lunch for two of us for seven euros seventy cents. There's a couple of toasted sandwiches and a couple of coffees. Now coffees cost about a one euro twenty, one euro fifty coffee, so much much cheaper than uh, in New Zealand. The other thing we've had to deal with this week is we've had a little bit of technology issues. We um, the SD card on my camera um, crapped out and I lost quite a bit of footage and. I uh, didn't realise for a little period of time, so we lost some footage this week, so we're a little bit lean on footage, and we also had some audio issues with, with the camera, so we lost some audio off, so um, we haven't got a lot of audio, and then we thought we had full roaming when we came to Portugal with our data um, sim, but apparently we only had 17 gigs, and at 17 gigs it just died, and um, we had no data for... Um, a little bit so we went into a bit of a panic mode to try and work out how we can still use Google Maps with no data and managed to find a Vodafone Portugal place and got a new sim which was 35 euros for unlimited which is actually not bad so that'll see us through. And a good thing about that was that uh, the shop was in a mall and it was a huge mall, two storey and it's the first mall I've been, the first proper mall. I've been to so I let him sit and sort out his data issues and I just went off and I shopped and it was yeah, glorious, I loved it. Well that's about it I think for this week so um, take a look at the video, um, if you like what we're doing smash the like button, if you haven't already subscribed click on subscribe otherwise we'll see you next week we're heading to out to Nazir but unfortunately we're at the wrong time of year for the big waves so we probably won't see any big waves and we're probably gonna head up the coast a bit to Porto uh, then maybe come back onto the N2 and we'll see how we go from there. See you next week. See ya. Bye. Bye. Walking into La Rocchio, El Rocchio, sorry, not La, El Rocchio, and we reached the end of the tarmac. This town is all about the horses, so well, there's, there's a steel horse. Um, so they have no paved roads. Need to find out where we get our horses from. It's like walking into a cowboy town, isn't it? Pretty warm this morning, Claire. Very warm. Won't be doing much more. Forecast to be over 30, so yeah. We've oh, only 31.
into right away and we are in this nice coffee. Um, we're in Sao Paulo. Something else. Yeah. It's a beautiful little town, it's lovely. We've just been for a walk around the old and it's absolutely gorgeous. And I love, love, love the way Chico does cobblestones for all the walkways and they have lovely patterns and the cobblestones and everything. It's beautiful. Anyway, we are here to try local Portuguese delicacy, which is like a custard tart type thing. Geometric designs, including the swastika. Just showing how the country house has been built right on top of it from the outside here. This is the Casa Rural de Mulleru, so the country house. Go inside the Casa, the farmhouse, and you can see some steps going up to the watchtower in the corner there. And on the floor, there's an apse, apparently, with a so the building's being built right over top of this. The original Roman uh, ruins are from second and third centuries, and the house was built later in the 16th into the next room. This is the kitchen area inside the house, but underneath there is actually a winemaking area. So these pits are relating to crushing of wine and production of wine. Here we are in the town of Evora, parked right beside an aqueduct. And Aqu the walls of the city, which actually run all the way around completely, the city. Yes, it's completely complete is wall. circled by wall. So we're about to go in through a gate and go for a wander and see 
where the aqueduct goes. The aqueduct was built in the 1500s, uh, most likely on top of a Roman aqueduct, so it is date, originally dating back to Roman periods, but this um, construction was from the 1500s. It's 18 kilometres long. 18 kilometres long, it brings water into the town and there's some fountains we can go and have a look, which it supplies. All right, let's go and take a look. Oh, the door's open. Let's go up and see what is up here. Oh, it's pretty dark. Oh, jeez. Hello. Maybe I should take my sunglasses off. That might help. Yeah, there we go. The camera's seen it better than it actually is. It's a lot darker. Oh, hello. Is there someone up there? There's someone else up there. Stairs are pretty well worn. That has a big size swing. Sounds a bit dodgy. This is the um, tower we were up before, and down here is a door underneath, and it's called, well, the tower and the door are called Tower and Door of the Ill Fated Hour. Let's go through the, the ill fated door. <laughs> <laughs> 